Hello, my name is John Linford and I work for ARM. Today I want to talk a little bit about ARM and HPC, where we are today and where we see ourselves going in the near future. My talk is organized into two parts. First, I'm going to present an overview of some of the HPC platforms that ARM partners have deployed today. And I'll show some application benchmarks from those platforms to give you a sense for how they perform. Then I'll take a look at the future of ARM in HPC by presenting the ARM IP roadmap for CPUs, which would be appropriate for HPC workloads. In particular, I'll focus on the ARM V1 CPU, which I think will be of great interest to HPC community in the near future. And finally, I'll cover some research topics of interest to give you a sense for where ARM is thinking about the future of HPC. As a reminder, ARM is not really a chip company. We are an IP company, intellectual property. ARM works with silicon providers like Fujitsu and Marvell and Ampere and so on to develop products for different markets. ARM licenses its IP to our partners. Our partners develop products with that IP. And then ARM collects royalties and license fees on the sale of our partner's product. ARM's role is to make sure that our partners are successful. Because when our partners are successful, ARM is successful. This model of partnership has been very beneficial in the mobile and embedded space. And recently, we've seen it starting to take up momentum in the cloud, server, and HPC spaces as well. In 2018, ARM announced a new line of intellectual property called Neoverse, which was intended for servers, high-end computing, and supercomputing, HPC. Off the back of that announcement, we saw many key announcements and key wins from ARM partners like Huawei, NVIDIA, AWS, Microsoft, Marvell, Ampere. And ultimately, we've seen the momentum of ARM and HPC culminate in Fujitsu and Riken's enormous success of deploying Fugaku as the number one supercomputer on the top 500. So now I'd take, like to take a look at some of the platforms that ARM intellectual property can be found in, current HPC-based platforms. ARM, as an IP company, has a unique opportunity to define a common platform for HPC across multiple different products. The ARM HPC platform is a uniform stack of software that provides everything a scientist might need to perform their experiments on the supercomputers they have. All ARM-based HPC platforms can provide the same capabilities, but with using the silicon provider's unique differentiating features found in the CPUs. ARM's role is to set the standard and provide that common layer of functionality which enables innovation from the partners. Over time, we've seen the HPC ecosystem grow up from that common base layer to become a rich and vibrant software stack, complete with applications, developer tools, middleware, such as MPIs and OpenShmem, compilers, libraries, and file systems, everything you might need in an HPC system now runs on ARM-based silicon from ARM partners. A key feature, indeed a cornerstone of the ARM HPC ecosystem, is ARM's Scalable Vector Extension, or SVE. SVE is a technology for vectorization that enables a programmer to think abstractly about vectorization in their codes. 
the instruction set architecture does not define a vector width. So architectures with different vector widths can use the same binary instruction set. For instance, Fujitsu's A64FX defines SVE at a 512-bit width. But other architectures, like the Neoverse V1, which I'll just introduce in a moment, define it at a different width, at 256 bits. Widths from 128 bits up to 2048 bits are possible. This again demonstrates how ARM sets a standard allowing others to innovate from that base layer. ARM feels that CPU architects should choose the vector width most appropriate for their markets and provides the tools to make that possible. Today, SVE is only available in Fujitsu's A64FX CPU, which is deployed in Fugaku at Riken, the fastest supercomputer on the top 500. I hardly need to tell this audience about Fugaku. You know more about it than ever I would. But I think Fugaku is a fantastic demonstration of what a balanced archite architecture can do. It demonstrates the strength of combining high bandwidth memory with wide vectors. And it shows how co-designing for key applications can result in fantastic performance. This is a demonstration of the power of the ARM intellectual property in HPC that I hope other partners will follow on. Fugaku is an example of a leadership class system, the national computing instrument. But much of the HPC market is concerned with commodity HPC workloads. These are the small scale, run of the mill, capacity workloads that are found at manufacturers, engineering companies, universities, research labs. And while I'm sure those entities would love to work on a system the size of Fugaku, the reality is their needs are best served by a highly available platform. This has led to the rise of cloud computing in the HPC market. We see a growing trend towards cloud computing for commodity HPC. And the AWS ARM-based Graviton2 has demonstrated itself as a very solid platform for commodity HPC workloads. The Graviton2 implements tiles of Neoverse N1 CPUs, which include ARM's microarchitectural implementation of the ARM instruction set architecture. ARM has been working closely with AWS to tune applications for this platform. We're, work, we're focused on applications from specific HPC verticals, including aerospace and automotive, that is to say CFD workloads primarily, the oil and gas sector, and also government and the public sector. Oil and gas has shown to be a very appropriate workload for the Graviton2. Benchmarks like SpecFem 3D show excellent scaling on the AWS Graviton2 with performance comparable to similar x86 offerings. We also see that the price per simulation is much lower on the Graviton2. This can be traced directly to the lower margins on the AWS Graviton2's manufacturer and the optimizations that AWS have been able to implement in their platform. OpenFoam is a common and popular CFD toolkit. And we see that it performs very well on the AWS Graviton2. In terms of absolute runtime, OpenFoam performs similarly to the x86 offerings, slightly slower, but not enough of a slowdown to seriously concern a commodity HPC user. They're more concerned with the price per simulation, which is very competitive on the AWS Graviton2. We see approximately 37% better performance per dollar on the Graviton2 
when compared to similar x86 offerings when for about the same runtime. Weather prediction and the weather community have long been pioneers of using cloud, cloud computing in HPC. The AWS Graviton2 can run the popular WARF model faster than an x86 instance provided by AWS, and as well as cheaper. Overall runtime is better, and price per simulation is lower on this platform. AWS with the Graviton2 demonstrated that Neoverse cores can be used to approach commodity HPC workloads. These cores are also available in the Ampere Ultra, which packs up to 128 Neoverse cores into a single socket. This leads to a scale-out ability for commodity HPC that is difficult to find anywhere else. They also have very competitive power efficiency meaning that densities can be higher and the price per simulation can be lower. On the Ampere Ultra, we compare to, in, to x86-based instances, instances from AWS, like the C5A, which implements a second-generation AMD Epic, or the C5, which implements a second-generation Intel Xeon. Seismic wave modeling for oil and gas runs about the same or slightly faster than the x86 instances. Weather forecasting applications are significantly faster due to the high number of memory channels and large number of available cores per socket. CFD applications also perform very well on this platform, being approximately 33% faster than the leading x86 instance from AWS. Geodynamics applications like SpecFim 3D can show up to 60% runtime performance improvement when using two sockets of Ampere Ultra compared to 96 threads, that is two sockets of the Intel Xeon processor. Again, this is largely due to the ability of the code to scale out to meet the memory bandwidth demands and the high number of memory controllers, 16 memory controllers in two sockets, which enables the data movement that HPC applications require. This is a solid demonstration of ARM's Neoverse cores as a compelling platform for commodity HPC workloads. Recently, we've seen some fantastic announcements from NVIDIA around supporting CUDA, and NVIDIA GPUs on ARM CPU hosts. Researchers at Oak Ridge and UIUC have examined the performance of molecular dynamics applications on these configurations. They find that applications like VMD and NAMD, which derive most of their runtime performance directly from the GPU, perform approximately the same on a ARM hosted GPU as they do on an x86 hosted GPU or a power hosted GPU. Well, now I'd like to present the ARM IP roadmap and highlight CPU features that will be compelling for HPC workloads of the future. ARM's Neoverse IP roadmap is divided into three product lines. I'm showing two of them here, the N-series and the E-series. You've already seen the N-series as the N1 core, which is available in the Graviton2 and the Ampere Ultra. The N1 was a significant single thread, thread performance uplift over the common A72 core, which is known in other ARM applications, mainly small-scale computing and mobile and embedded devices. Our next generation will be the V-series. ARM recognizes HPC as a key market and understands the need of this market's 
understands this market's requirement for single thread performance. The V1 platform, which was formerly coned named Zeus, will provide a 50% single threaded performance uplift over the N1. It also implements SVE in a dual 256-bit configuration. This will be our first core to implement SVE. Shortly after the Zeus launch, we will also launch another N series core called the N2, which was previously codenamed Perseus. Perseus provides a 40% single threaded performance uplift over the N1. Zeus provides 50%, but Perseus provides only 40%. However, Perseus provides better efficiency. You can pack more Perseus cores into a die than you can Zeus cores. Perseus implements SVE in a dual 128-bit configuration. The V1 platform combined with the N2 platform are compelling options for both commodity HPC and leadership HPC. The addition of GPUs to this picture further increases the number of applications that can be addressed by this platform. For example, an N2 could be used to host GPU applications where the majority of the application performance relies solely on the GPU, and therefore a powerful CPU would go to waste. But a GPU combined with a V1 platform would be a balanced design for applications which are bottlenecked on both the CPU and the GPU. Applications which cannot take advantage of GPUs can use a V1 platform alone. Future generations of the Neoverse cores are codenamed Poseidon. We expect approximately 30% performance uplift over the V1 and N2 generation cores in this Poseidon generation. I wanna take a closer look at the V1 platform now. This is our first core to implement SVE, and it is designed from the get-go for HPC and machine learning. HPC workloads like Hack, Milk, HPCG, HPL, and NAS Parallel Benchmarks have shown significant performance uplift over the N1 cores. We have multiple silicon partners that have taken licenses of V1, and I'll present some of the public designs based on V1 here in a moment. Implementing SVE in the V1 does more than simply increase the vector bandwidth. Studies have shown that SVE vectorizes more effectively than fixed width vector architectures. For instance, if we compare the performance of codes compiled with SVE to the codes compiled with NEON running on the V1, we see that Overall, fewer cycles are required to perform the same application task. In this chart, lower is better. So we see, for instance, that Hack is taking approximately 60% as many cycles with SVE as it would with NEON. V1 also implements the BFLOAT 16 type, which accelerates machine learning applications significantly. V1 support for VLOAT float 16 will be implemented in the ARM NN and the ARM compute libraries. Again, ARM provides these cores, but we do not implement them. That's left to the ARM partners. At this point, two partners have publicly announced that they will be using V1 cores in their next generation designs. The first partner is Etri in Korea. They're designing the KAB21 chip, which will implement HBM, DDR5, and ARM V1 cores all together in the same platform, designed squarely for HPC and scientific computing. This design is unique because having taken ARM's on-chip mesh and cores, 
they have also added custom accelerators designed to, to improve the runtime performance of machine learning applications and dense matrix application and scientific applications that require dense matrix operations. The sock itself is designed as four tiles, and each tile contains a mixture of ARM V1 cores, the custom XEMC accelerators, and HBM 2E. There are memory controllers to, con to connect to DDR5 off package. The tiles, the PCI system, memory system, all are connected together by an ARM provided mesh. This jump starts the design and dramatically lowers barriers of entry and validation for, for the project. The project designers are free to innovate in the design of their accelerator and know that ARM's V1 CPU will be validated and will provide the performance they need for their applications. Another partner that has announced uh, that they are licensing Zeus is Silicon Pearl as part of the European Processor Initiative. The EPI's CPU roadmap combines ARM cores with RISC-V accelerators and targets a broad spectrum of applications ranging from HPC systems at the exascale to automotive and integrated systems. So the first EPI CPU is called Rhea and it is anticipated in the second half of FY21. CyPearl's Rhea can be seen at this link I've provided. CyPearl are building a common platform for EPI. In a nutshell, they're using ARM IP to build a system which makes it easy to innovate on accelerators. Zeus cores provide the compute blocks in the system, implementing SVE at 256 bits. A coherent on-chip network connects all the pieces together. And then the designers are free to innovate on near core and in mesh accelera accelerators for applications, as well as unique memory hierarchies composing HBM and DDR. So we see that there's some very interesting systems coming to market in the near future. But ARM is thinking further on. The systems that you see here are using intellectual property that ARM has been developing for many years. The work we're doing today won't be on the market for many years to come. So I wanna give you a glimpse of the kinds of research topics that we are exploring and invite you to collaborate with the ARM HPC community so that you can provide your feedback on where ARM should be focusing and innovating. First, I want to show the second generation of SVE called SVE2. The first generation of SVE was designed squarely for HPC and is today available in leadership class supercomputers only. SVE2 adds additional features and capabilities to the SVE instruction set that make it more applicable in a wider base of use cases found in client devices, edge devices, server devices, and indeed HPC devices. Some of the SVE2 features include a non-temporal gather scatter, which could be very useful in HPC applications and applications that rely on sorting algorithms. There are also a number of features that while they are not directly applicable to HPC, they are part of the ARM edge to cloud story, and they demonstrate ARM's ability to innovate around applications in constrained resource spaces. For instance, low power and low memory devices. We see, for instance, support for histogram acceleration being of interest to HPC applications, even though this was not originally developed for HPC. Leading on, from SVE, ARM is considering what can we do to our, in our IP portfolio to make it even easier for platform designers 
to build a compelling product for HPC. One idea that we kick around frequently is the idea of a near core or an in core accelerator for specific applications. I would be very interested in hearing your feedback on what is needed in a near core accelerator for HPC. For instance, if you had to choose one killer feature to be extremely fast, what would it be? And more fundamentally, can an accelerator combined with a cloud class core be a compelling HPC platform? Is it absolutely necessary to create very powerful cores or can lightweight cores be enhanced with a near core accelerator and be more power efficient and cheaper to produce? Adding accelerators on a mesh creates a whole new dimension for optimization and complicates the HPC software ecosystem dramatically. How will we deal with this extreme heterogeneity in a socket? How will we program systems with multiple accelerators? What tools are needed to provision, program, debug, and optimize HPC systems that are accelerated or even disaggregated, where the accelerators can be provisioned dynamically based on the application. And a simple question, what's missing? What piece of ARM IP do you want to see? I'd love to get the feedback from the community on all of these open questions. The best way to engage with the ARM HPC community is through the ARM HPC Users Group. The ARM HPC Users Group is an independent organization run and, op and managed and established by members of the HPC community. The ARM HPC Users Group held its first meeting in November of 2020, and we're planning a second meeting coming up this spring. Our associate directors and managing directors are people you know well. Reach out at the link provided here or contact the members of the organization directly. Participating in ARM HPC Users Group is easy, it's free. Simply show up to a meeting and enjoy. You can see all the presentations from our last meeting at the link I've provided below. ARM is still in the early stages in HPC. Although we've taken the first spot on the top 500 through the innovation of Fujitsu and of Riken, we have a lot of ground to cover, especially in commodity HPC. It's been a journey and we're looking forward to what comes next. Thank you very much for your time.